Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Jeremy from Synady again, and today we are talking all about how to build a super cluster in Nats. Now, in our last episode, we talked about how to build a regular cluster, and, and now we're going to talk about how to connect these multiple clusters together to build a super cluster. And along the way, we'll also do things like configure Jetstream, because Jetstream in clustered mode operates a little bit differently, and we're going to go over how to configure that. So let's get started. Now, to recap a little bit, a super cluster is a cluster of clusters. So last week, we spent our time building this kind of three node cluster. And the semantics behind this is that it operates as one singular system, like as one server that you connect to. But in fact, we have the redundancy of multiple nodes. Um, so a client can be connected to a certain node, and it can still talk to another client transparently um, via that cluster. A supercluster is actually the same kind of idea, but nodes in a single cluster are kind of assumed that they live in the same data center or the same availability zone, but maybe different machines or different VMs. Um, whereas a supercluster spans not only uh, different geographies, but different you know public clouds um, in general. And so you could have a cluster over here in US East on GCP, and then a cluster over here in Europe, maybe on AWS, and a cluster over here in uh, Asia Pacific, maybe that's going to be on Azure or something else. You can you can really kind of mix and match however you want. And it's really nice to be able to kind of connect these systems together and have NATs really like take care of all of the complexity around making it feel like one big cohesive system. And so before we get into building out a super cluster, we're going to return to our cluster example and we're going to configure it with Jetstream. That way we have everything that we need to be able to add Jetstream assets onto it. So let's get started. So first off, I'm going to bring up my Vim here. And if you remember, we had this Docker Compose file. And this Docker Compose file had three different uh, NAT servers set up via the NATS image. And um, we're also using this server.conf where we've configured our system account user. And so that way we can kind of look at some of the stats and everything about these servers. And then we have this cluster directive here where we've uh, set this up. We've configured only one route. We of course can create multiple routes for NA2 or NA3, but um, the reason I kind of just set it at one route is to show you guys that uh, this is a gossip protocol that we're using. So although these these uh, nodes that come up are going to all connect to NA1, they gossip about each other so they can form a mesh. And so in practice, you're probably going to want to maybe double or triple up for these connections. And you'll be doing the same thing with gateways in uh, super clusters, just so if NA1 goes down, you don't you're not out of luck. Um, you, you can have multiple seed servers here, but we'll keep this to one for now. So let's go ahead and fire up this cluster. I'm going to run Docker Compose up, and it's going to bring up these uh, machines. And over in the next tab, I'm going to add a watch uh, command uh, to list out all of these servers with our cluster sys context that we created last episode. And there we go. We can see our three servers here. They're connected via a North America cluster, um, but they don't have Jetstream enabled. And we are going to want to use Jetstream for this example. That way we can create a key value store that exists on the cluster. And not only does it exist on the cluster, but it's going to be replicated amongst all of the nodes in an R3. And that way, if one of the nodes goes down, we still have that data available to us and we can continue to use that particular key value store or that stream that we're using. And so um, this is really powerful for uh, for clusters and for Jetstream. You get redundancy. You can make an R3 or even an R5. Um, and it's just going to be dependent on your performance characteristics that you want for your system. So in order to enable Jetstream, we actually need to create a, an account and a user that is able to use Jetstream. Right now we have our system account, which is there by default, um, but it doesn't have Jetstream enabled. And we don't want to enable Jetstream here. In fact, we want to create an account that can utilize Jetstream um, for a, maybe a particular business case. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new team. We're going to call this Team A. And this Team A account is going to have uh, just one user. Let's call this user um, Jeremy. And we're just going to say his password is password. Now, 
I talked about this a little bit last episode, but right now we're defining all of our accounts and all of our users inside of our server config. And this might not be ideal. In fact, Nats has a lot of different ways that we can deal with uh, authentication and authorization. And in a future episode, I'm gonna cover our decentralized auth with JWTs because it's a really, really powerful construct. And it's, it makes um, you know creating these clusters and super clusters in a secure way um, really, really nice. And so uh, for now, we're going to bake these straight into the config for simplicity and so we have our jeremy user in team a and we just need to say that team a has jetstream um, enabled so we're going to say jetstream uh, enable or enabled and now we're ready to actually have a user that can utilize jetstream so i'm going to pull our stuff down and what I'm going to do is we need to create a context for this particular user so we can utilize him to create our key value store. So we're going to say Nats context save. And I'm going to call this cluster Jeremy. And we'll also select that particular context once we create it. All right. Um, and now it's not connected to any servers. That's fine. We'll, uh, we'll fix that in just a second. Before we do that, we're going to edit this context with that username and password that we just created. So we'll say user is Jeremy, password is password. Now we should have access to this particular uh, user on team A that has Jetstream enabled. Now that we have our user created, we simply need to enable Jetstream on each of these servers. So we can just use the Jetstream directive here and we're not gonna pass in any configuration. We're just simply going to enable Jetstream. Now I'm going to uh, pull these servers up and then I'm simply going to say Nats KV list to ensure that we have Jetstream enabled. It says no key value buckets found. That's great. Let's go create one. So we'll say KV add, and we could just call this config for a key value store. Now what this is going to do is it's going to show me that this was made on North America too as the leader. And anytime I talk to this cluster about this KV store, it's actually going to be a polling from North America too. Now, if I wanted redundancy here, I would use what are called replicas. And so I'm going to say Nats KV remove config for a second, and we're going to recreate it, but this time with as an R3. So we're gonna say Nats KV uh, add config. We'll say replicas is three. That way it's going to persist uh, the information about this key value store on each of the servers. So you can see that the leader is now NA3, um, we have a replica on NA2 and a replica on NA1. And if we go over to our watch command that we made over here, you can see that Jetstream is now enabled for each of these servers. So that's kind of how you enable Jetstream on a cluster. It's actually really easy. You edit the config to enable Jetstream and then you work with a Jetstream enabled account. Um, so, but it, the really cool part is that now you can create streams, you can create key value stores and object stores that um, are replicated across the cluster. So in case one goes down, you're not hosed in terms of your data, um, which is really, really awesome. So now that we have Jetstream enabled, let's actually scale this single cluster into a cluster of clusters via gateways. So I'm gonna close out some of these extra things and we're going to move over to our configuration over here. Now, we've had so far been working with a single configuration called server.conf, but one of the things that we'll want to do is split this into multiple configurations, one for each cluster. That way we can kind of configure based on the particular cluster and some, most of the stuff will be the same, but some of it will have to change. And so first things first, we're going to go over to our server.conf and I'm going to rename this to na conf and we'll update our docker compose file accordingly we'll go over here and we'll name this na.conf in each of our particular nodes um, and everything else will kind of stay the same um, but we're going to copy this na.conf into an eu.conf so we can um, also be you know utilizing a configuration for the EU cluster. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to copy na.conf into eu.conf and we'll start messing with it. So let's go do that now. We'll edit eu.conf. And the only things that we'll really need to change, we'll keep Jetstream, we'll keep all the same accounts. Um, we're going to rename our cluster name to eu. And we're obviously going to point to eu1 for our cluster. 
And then we're going to set up some gateway connections that will exist in both of these uh, configurations. So the first thing we want to do when we want to connect these two clusters together is we want to say gateway. And inside our gateway, this looks very similar to our cluster definition, by the way. We're going to give it a name. Um, in this case, this one's going to be called EU. And we want to give it a port. So we can give this uh, 7222 just to kind of fall in line with our same pattern that we got here. And then instead of uh, routes, we're actually going to call this gateways. What other gateways do we want to connect to? Uh, and the way that we do that is we can say name uh, is NA. And in order to connect to our NA cluster, we are going to use the URL uh, nats colon slash slash NA1 um, 7222. And if we wanted to connect to EU, we would simply just say EU. Um, let's make sure that those are the right ones. And we'll say uh, we'll connect to EU1. And just like I explained before with our cluster routes, we can also connect to two or three here um, to add more seeds. But these also gossip uh, between each other. So we can also just have single seeds if we, if we really wanted to. Um, and so this is really all that we need in order to connect to, uh, an NA cluster to an EU cluster. Um, but we'll need this gateway also inside of our NA cluster. Let's go ahead and do that. So we've defined a gateway block inside of our NA cluster. We just want to rename this to NA. And now we need to go back to our Docker Compose and we need to actually create our EU nodes. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Our EU nodes are going to be looking a little bit different. This one's going to be called EU1. and it doesn't need to have a port declaration and we're not going to be exporting any ports because we don't need to connect directly to them. We just need to see uh, the, that the other cluster has connected to it. We're going to name this uh, EU1. And instead of taking na.conf, we're going to just simply load in eu.conf. And then this is really all that we would need for these clusters to connect to each other. Let's go quickly go back to our eu.conf and make sure everything is the way that it needs to be. So our cluster definition is named EU and it's pointing to EU1. And our gateway definition is also named EU and it's pointing to NA1 and EU1. So that's great. So now we can create our EU2 and EU3 nodes. And so we have a three node cluster for EU and a three node cluster for NA. Let's actually test this out and see what we get. And I just realized I made a typo as I was trying to bring these up. Um, this was name and we forgot to name it port. And so we were running into an issue there. So let's go over to our EU conf and then our uh, NA conf and make sure that we rename these to port. Sorry guys, that was my typo. Um, we're gonna bring these servers up and hopefully these will all connect to each other. And we should see inside our NATS server list that we have an EU cluster with EU1, 2, and 3, and an NA cluster with NA1, 2, and 3. So we have set up a multi-cluster super cluster now, which is great. But really, in order to achieve um, you know, the, the amount of redundancy that we need, it would be good to have three clusters here. So let's just do some more copy and pasting, and we'll do an Asia-Pacific uh, cluster that will connect here via gateway connections as well. I'm in na.conf right now. I'm just going to add an AP gateway connection. It's going to connect to AP1 7222. Uh, we'll copy this and we'll paste it into our eu.conf as well. Um, and then I'm going to just simply copy this uh, copy this file. So I'll say copy eu.conf uh, into ap.conf, and then we'll load up ap.conf. And really, the only again, the only things that we really need to change is our cluster name over here. Um, our seed servers that we're connecting to and our gateway name over here and we should be good to go. So now let's go over to our docker compose file and we're just going to copy all of these EU nodes and we'll just rename them to AP and we should be good to go. So we're going to fire these guys up one last time and let's wait for everything to connect. And as you could see, we now have our Asia Pacific cluster, our EU cluster, and our NA cluster, um, which is great. And we're kind of running out of space a little bit here, so let's pull these in. Um, you can see that uh, we have 
three nodes in each cluster, and we have six outgoing gateways, six uh, incoming gateways is a total of 18. And this means all the clusters are meshing together, which is really, really nice. As you start playing with this cluster, you can have clients connect to different clusters based on uh, where they are geographically, and they can start you know, talking with clients that are connected to other clusters. And this is all happening in a very transparent way. And so I would urge you, go ahead and set up the super cluster, start running some tests and seeing how Nats um, starts to interact with these things, because it's really, really cool seeing a system like this at scale. Um, and that's really the whole episode so far. So we covered Jetstream inside of clusters, and we also set up a super cluster. We have these nine servers running, and it really wasn't all that much code. Um, really just copying and pasting a lot of things and setting up a configuration for each and every different region. And so I hope you guys like this video. If you liked content like this, like and subscribe to this content to our channel here. I'd really like to have feedback about you know what you guys would like to see next. Uh, we can cover things like leaf nodes. We can cover things like our decent centralized authentication and authorization. There's just so much here in terms of what Nats can do, um, especially at scale. And so I'm looking forward to making more videos and more content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week with another episode.